Creed 2, spoiler talk. The movie's been out for a week. I've been trying to get this man on and talk about Creed 2 uh, for a while now. I know it was, it was out before Thanksgiving. Hopefully by now everyone's had a chance to see this movie. We've been talking a lot about it. It's been really heavily praised. Made a lot of money. Most successful Thanksgiving movie, like I think non-animated family movie of all time in Thanksgiving weekend. Most successful Rocky movie of all time. One of the most successful sports movies of all time, box office wise. Big, big movie. Tons of praise. I don't think I know anybody who said the movie sucks. I've seen people say that, you know, it's not as good as Creed 1. I've seen people say it's the best Rocky movie of all time. Um, it's really up for debate, but we're going to talk about the spoiler, spoilers in Creed 2. And if you heard the Geek Them 101 podcast, you know this man. He was on there with me talking about Rocky 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Balboa, Creed 1. And now he's back to talk about Creed 2 in detail, real to real. What's up, Geekdom? Always glad to be on here. Thank you for having me, and especially for just talking about the Creed and Rocky franchise. We had a whole lot of fun with that freaking podcast. Super long, but definitely worth it, man. Thanks for having me again. I definitely enjoyed it, and I think that uh, you should, uh, y'all should check it out. Um, it's on over on the geekdom101.lipson.com page, but I'll leave a link down below. Download that so you can hear our reviews of Rocky 1, 2, 3, 4, all the Rocky movies and kind of our retrospective of the films. Now, uh, Creed 2, we went into this movie very apprehensive. We, for You and I talked about this and agreed. Like When we first heard Drago was coming back and they were going to kind of bring back Rocky 4, because Rocky 4 is very popular, which... I I get it. It's over the top, cartoony, but it's just I don't think it's a great film at all. And I, but it's popular. I, I'm over here thinking, okay, they're gonna cash out. It's gonna be very, you know, you know, it's it's gonna be very just uh, cartoony. Like it, it's not gonna have the same emotional weight that Creed was trying to recapture with right? that film because Creed was trying Jeez. to go back. Yeah. It, Creed was trying to go back to what made Rocky really special to begin with, which small personal character and theme driven narrative. And it really succeeded in that. And then in order to do like, you know, you and I even talked about that before this movie was announced. We knew anything about it. They were going, we like, okay, there's all of these little inklings of stuff they can do. They're going to jump and grab all this stuff and continue this personal story. And then they came off with this. It's going to be a pretty much a, just a genuine sequel to Rocky four. And the problem with that is Rocky four was cartoonish. It was like, it's not what they promised us. The Creed franchise would actually be. And that's right. why it was apprehensive. Like, Oh no, man. Yeah, no, I agree. And it wound up being a really, really good freaking movie captured. The emotion was totally not a cartoon. They made Ivan Drago into a realistic character, even though uh, you can say that uh, there's been jokes made that, you know, uh, Victor Drago was kind of a beta, you know, still the story. And actually, Ivan Drago's the real beta, bro, because he let one woman, he let a woman ruin his entire life, bro. This is almost <laughs> as bad as Christian Bale stopped being Batman because Maggie Gyllenhaal died. Like, we're on that <laughs> level now, bro. He got beta. So, uh, okay, yeah, dude, okay. So after Rocky IV, I, I guess that uh, Bridget Nielsen, you know, whatever her name was, Ivanka, I mean, whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know her name, she left Ivan Drago, and I guess the kid would have already been born, even though the timeline makes no sense, but whatever, let's go with it. Um, the timeline <laughs> did not make any sense here. So the kid was already, I guess a kid, I guess Ivan Drago had a kid, and so she left the family, she abandoned her family, which... Russia's a cold, cold place in more ways than one for that. Mm -hmm. And she's the real villain of the movie, dude. I, you know, when she walked out at the end, I'm like, what a fucking... Sylvester Stallone, of course, she divorced him, so let's make her into a villain in the movie. <laughs> and he wrote I mean, the movie. He wrote the script, so he knew what he was doing. But you know what? He, he still gave her a payday. So he didn't <laughs> she have was, to do that. She was she was vital to this movie. I mean, her her introduction and i have to say i think a lot of people were actually pretty shocked to see that i've seen people talking about oh that was a shocking cameo but it's like she was so important to that story because you know the problem with victor's character or victor and ivan first of all like you said victor's character doesn't make any sense uh but when has continuity ever made sense with rocky i mean it's pretty tight but when it comes to people's ages they've never gotten it right and right. Uh, so Victor's character is definitely already there, but Ivan Drago and her character in four, this is something I always thought that they needed to jump in. And I think they did it perfectly is she was the person who spoke for him. I mean, 
Dolph Lundgren had like six lines in Rocky IV. He is just more of a cartoonish villain presence, and she was the person pulling the strings behind the back. Like she needed to be in this movie. I'm really glad that they put her in it. Yeah, no, she did, and um, you know the the whole, I think you know we're gonna again we're doing spoilers, so we're gonna assume that everybody watching this has already seen the film, and. You know, I assume that y'all know what happens, and if you haven't seen it, then what are you waiting for? Like Mickey said in Rocky Two, what are you waiting for? The the movie's incredible, dude. Okay, I thought it was great. I thought Ivan was totally beta. He's doing all this to get her back. She abandoned him, dude. She abandoned you, bro. You have your son. You have your son, man. Take care of him. And at the end of the film, he did. He threw in the towel, seeing that his son was in trouble and wasn't gonna give up. What an emotional moment for me, bro. I was touched. I it was like they he, they turned him baby face, not fully, because I was waiting for him to. Uh, I was actually kind of let down that he didn't acknowledge that he felt bad about killing Apollo, because I was hoping he would at least say at one point in the movie, you know, I I, I didn't want Apollo to ever really die. I, I was just trying to, you know, I was young and stupid, but he never did that. But I kind of feel like him throwing in the towel kind of is symbolic of it. What do you think? No, I I I completely agree. And the way I viewed him him throwing in the towel, first of all totally symbolic with the whole way that you know that was the big thing in rocky four and even throughout this film was rocky wow. didn't throw in the towel because apollo told him not to and it's not like victor told him not to but he does it it's symbolic of that it kind of comes full circle and it's really just victor and victor's on the ropes you know adonis is just waging war with him but Ivan Drago is just sitting there knowing after his former wife leaves and he I think that was when I saw he realizes that it's okay to you know my son is the only one for there for there for me when I got banished and everyone left me he was there he kept by my side and then he, that's why he wanted to come in and save him it was more important to him in that moment than gaining Russia's respect back through this fight and I that yeah. that was the that was the better Great. thing. That was so good because because Ivan was Ivan was always such a cartoonish villain. It was strange to me going into this movie and then walking out being like, "Wow, I feel like I understand him more now than I did back then." And he, he had more he, lines too. Yeah, he had more lines, but he wasn't the main character. He wasn't even the main antagonist or anything. I mean, this movie juggled so many different things in such a unique and perfect way that every character feels like they have a legitimate arc for themselves and they redeemed a lot that was kind of left open or was kind of a little underwhelming when you really think about it creatively from Rocky IV. I mean, the one thing I said in my non spoiler review was family. And I love how all three of the, of the characters of the families, you got the Balboas, the Creeds, and the Dragos. This was brilliant. This was very, and I heard, now I heard that the original script for this movie was complete and total cheese, and they had to go in there and fix it. I heard that Stallone, I heard that <laughs> Stallone made it out to be, that's what I heard. I don't know if it's true, an 80s movie, but whoever wrote the script and you know, finalized it, brilliant. You've got Adonis dealing with, his marriage, like Rocky II, it mirrors Rocky II. The, his daughter possibly being deaf. You've got, you know, that going on. Then you've got Rocky dealing with an arc that was started in Rocky Balboa with his son. You could say Rocky V, but it was Rocky Balboa. And then he finally reunites with the, with the son and meets his grandson, which was, what a great ending, dude. That I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But And then you have Drago, who at the end, yeah, he lost his wife, but he's got his son. At the end, you see them for a brief second running together. So it's like Drago found peace with his son. He's going to be a good father, and, you know, I, I like that a lot. Like, in the beginning of the movie, he talks about, you know, stray dogs and this and that, and then Rocky has that alpha line where he goes, where I'm from, you know, we get rid of strays, um, which was, <laughs> it was alpha, but it was also like, you know, he, um, I love how at the end he didn't see his son as a stray dog. He, he took him in like you should, and that was very touching. I also thought it was it was funny how, um, you know, one thing they did not cover was I was hoping they would cover Ivan Drago's body being deteriorated because of steroid abuse. I was thinking that might be a subplot. And actually, that might have been one of the ideas tossed around. Maybe we'll find out about it because I feel like that would be a, something to talk about, how, you know, steroid abuse can damage you later in life. Um, but this guy, Victor, I mean, it was also, there was a little bit of cartoonish because Victor was way too big. 
Um, <laughs> he's so big, like, like especially in that first fight. You're like, man, like he's just towering over, and he's well, obviously so, but still. Yeah, right. And and now the ending of the film, you know, with Rocky meeting his grandson for the first time, uh, and you know how he looks like Adrian. I mean, mm-hmm. first of all, the scene where they show Adrian in the hospital, like the picture, that was damn near tear jerking. And you know, you see him saying, you know, you look like your your grandma, and you know, him and his son. That was the best ending for that character. Uh, they could have come up with, in my opinion. I think him reuniting with his son and his grandson is the best ending. I'm so happy he did not die. I would have been livid if he died. Here we go again with Last Jedi shit. I'm so happy he did not die. I know. I've even seen that thrown around. And I guess we'll get more to Rocky, more the more to the end, because there's a lot to say about his character, but his send-off in this movie is so great. I, I really like the idea that he just got to leave. I mean, if we're, if, okay, if we we're talking about him, you know, him just sitting there at the very end of the fight, and he gets that one last alpha line, he's like, you know, no, it's your time now, and then he goes Love and it. sits down, and you're like, and, and just, we all know, symbolically, Sylvester Stallone is done. And if and if he's not done, then he should be done playing uh, Rocky Balboa. In fact, he just came out recently today and said that he believes that he's done. Of course, he said yeah. this before. Uh, yeah. He said this uh, multiple times before that he's done with playing this character. But this is a perfect send-off. He doesn't die. We don't have the same circular problem of, you know, he isn't Mickey. He's not going to die by Adonis' side. He's not anybody else like that. He gets that moment in the sun, drive off, and just be himself be his own person. Adonis at this point through the movie, they're in California. They're no longer in Philly. He doesn't have to come back. And it was a perfect, absolutely perfect send off for his character. He has a kid now. And the the scene at the end where he goes to visit Apollo's grave, and he's like, you know, I I, I got revenge, but not for you, for my daughter. Um, You know, that was a perfect send off as well, too. I thought that was just fantastically written. Um, How did you feel about, the uh, disqualification. I thought that was something we have not seen before in Rocky. I liked that a lot. Uh, I thought it was a great way to kind of go them to do the rematch. Um, it, it was it was very well done. I was hoping that they wouldn't have him just beat Adonis and then he gets the belt back at the end of the movie. It was good how they did it like that. I, I what do you think? I like that because, first of all, as you said, we've seen this before. I think it's pretty clear that watching this movie... This wasn't just Rocky IV or the sequel to Rocky IV. This was an amalgam of all the other Rocky movies. I mean, they had little bits of Rocky II in it, Rocky III, Rocky IV, even Rocky V with the send-off and all this other – like the father-son send-off. It's just – it all of it's all Rocky movies put into one. I can't believe they juggled it the way they did. But Right. But him, but him going in – I think you and I talked about this even in the podcast, but we definitely talked about in private – I thought from the very get-go, he's going to go in, he's going to lose to Drago, and then he's going to have to come back and win it. And I wasn't anticipating, I don't think anybody was anticipating them having him be disqualified to the point where it's like, oh, he still has the belt, and he still doesn't believe like he's a champion. And that's one of the main through lines of that entire movie is he doesn't feel like it. You get the belt at the very beginning, then you don't really feel like a champion, then you lose but you retain the belt, so you're really not the champion. You go have but, all this but, other but, stuff. But he did hit him cheap, though. It was a cheap shot. No, I I, I realize that, but he knows that he lost. I mean, everyone knows right. that he lost, and it's some it's surmised in that perfect. I, I I felt like it was kind of an homage to the Mr. T thing. It was like, uh, what do you predict? Pain. It was like, what did you think about that loss? What loss? Like that was such an alpha. Line. <laughs> like I right. I the, like I gotta say like um. Who's who's the actor? I don't know his name off the top of my head. Who did Victor? I think he he really pulled it off. I wasn't really thinking he was gonna do a great job, but I I really ended up walking away and liking him. Yeah, he was the angry young man, um, and no, and that was great. And I felt like he, uh, I felt like uh, he was he he did what he could in the movie. I, like you're right. I think he wasn't really the main the the story. I think Rock Creed. I think Creed was about was really about Rocky, uh, you know, and, and his thing. This movie was really about Creed. Michael B. Jordan, we talked about it in the non-spoiler, amazing. Just when he finds out his daughter might be deaf, the tears that came out of his eyes, he, this dude, you know, he deserves the success he's been getting, bro. People have been praising this man, and he is great, don't get me wrong, but every movie, he just knocks it out of the park, and this continues. Now he's building up that resume of just great performance after great performance after great performance. This was no different. Um, 
I, I just love that. How did you feel about Rocky and Donnie's little breakup? How Rocky didn't want him to take the fight, even though it's somewhat uncharacteristic of Rocky because everybody in his life tells him not to take fights and he does it anyways. What did you think about that? I actually really like that part of the story because, well, first of all, like I said, it's just the amalgam of all things before that were in a Rocky movie. You knew that you need Rocky and his corner in order to win that fight, especially with all the baggage that comes with it. So you you could kind of see that coming. Like this movie is nothing if not kind of formulaic. It's just the way that they did every single scene and all the characters kind of came and gave their A game. So, but Rocky not getting into Adonis' corner for that first fight and saying he was going to stay away, I think made a lot of sense. I think it gives a lot more credence to, you know, Rocky V. He's like talking about the things that he broke and never been fixed that we got to see in Rocky V and even Rocky VI. Like he hasn't been the same person and the franchise really hasn't been the same since Rocky IV. And a lot of that is because of the success of Rocky IV, the way people view the Rocky franchise after Rocky IV, and also what it did to the character. And it was kind of... I it was this thing where Rocky at that point is now the Mickey character of the franchise. This is something they've been trying to do for the longest time, ever since Rocky Five. You know, put him poor, out of the out of the poor, ring. Poor Mark Hamill, bro. He couldn't. That's right. I found a way to bury Last Jedi in, on this on the here. <laughs> I'm, hey, look, the, the, but the parallels were there. Eight movies, both franchises. Eight main ones, not not like side movies. And there's more great Rocky movies. Now, I'm not saying that any Rocky movie is as good as Empire. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but you could make an argument. But overall, like, numerically, there are more great Rocky movies than there are Star Wars movies, and that's sad. It, it, it is what it is. I, like, Rocky is easier than Star Wars to be enjoyable because it is kind of a formula. Even Creed or Creed Two, these movies, as good as they are, are yep, a formula. Yep. Uh, I like the formula. It no, of works course. every time because it's because it's human emotion. It is. You know what I mean? And so no, I think I think the character development with with Rocky stepping out of the corner, not wanting to be involved, especially when it comes to Drago, it totally made sense in terms of character. I know he's had a lot of people say no before, but after everything that he's been through, especially with this family, he's like that makes a lot of sense. Just no, don't do it. You have nothing to prove. Yeah, you no, it's true and. You know, but he did it, and I, I just love, you know, I love how he kind of reunited with, you know, Tony Tony Duke's son, and that was cool. Um, how did you feel about the, the training in this film? I, I enjoyed, like, the kind of different, they went to the desert this time. You know, we've seen the winter in, um, in Rocky IV. We've seen, like, obviously the streets of Philly several times. They went to the desert this time, and I love how he tells him to put his foot in the bucket and fight that big guy. I thought that was good stuff. <laughs> That was that was great, and I I yes. really like I I really like that. I will say, the training in this movie, even though the montage is incredibly effective, I went to actually go see it with my sister, and after we got got out, she said there wasn't a lot of montages. Like the training was really short, and I, I think the that's opposite true. of Rocky Four. <laughs> yeah, like Rocky Four is just all montage, but it, yeah, it's like I you know what. I'm totally fine with that if that is what this franchise wants to be. If it doesn't want to focus too heavily on montages because that's what Rocky became. And this really wants to kind of plant its flag and be its own thing, especially in the next movie. Now it it feels like. So if the montages are still there, we get glimpses of them. We do something different every single time, like what they did with Creed and what they did here. It's totally fine, I think. Like, I, I don't mind that. It's still kind of a smile from cheek to cheek moment and start freaking clapping as soon as he falls on the ground and gets back up because in rocky that would have been like a 15 minute emotional scene with people yelling at him and all this other stuff and just so much you know uh, he so much soul searching for him to get back up and start running again but in this movie he's like nope just get back up start running again then we get into like kind of the very last part of that montage you know yeah it was Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. Yeah, him getting back up with the, with the car, just oh, it was so and the good. the Rocky music gonna fly now. It was like oh my god. Oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course at the end they put it again. They had the, the right musical. Yeah. Um, all, all, also the alpha levels of this movie. Just you know the fact that the the scene. I love the line where he's like, you know, the Russia, the referees might go to decision, and we got to make sure this go to a decision. I, I smiled, bro. I was like. <laughs> We gotta. We have to beat this guy and knock him out. 
and I, and, and, you, and it seemed impossible because of how big he was and how monstrous he was. But you know, um, I love that so much. How did you feel about? I mean, I actually I love this movie so much, dude. Like the early in the film, you know, the proposal and then the thing with his with his mom and you know trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. How he kind he was kind of neglecting his wife and. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed like how he was. He was kind of a prick early in the film. What this is, uh, real to real, bro, is it's kind of what Ryan Johnson and yes, I'm bringing it up again, but it, it needs to be compared. Try to do with Luke Skywalker. We're trying to break down the character and rebuild him. For Donnie, he had to break him down, break him down, rebuild him, and that's what happened. He, he was kind of a prick in the middle of the movie, and then by the end. You know, when him and Rocky reunited, Rocky was one of the first guys at his freaking hotel, be- or hotel, hospital, bedside, excuse me, um, just showed how strong that friendship is. I mean, I'll be real with you. I don't want Creed 3. I don't want it. This is the perfect end to the franchise. If they do it without Rocky being in it, I'm going to be disappointed, unless it's like in 30 years and, you know, Creed's older. And if they do it with Rocky, there's no story that can be told at this point because Rocky's so important to the character. So I personally think that... This, the, the the relationship between the two is at its peak here, and they all ended they all ended pretty happy, you know. I agree. I agree. I do want Creed three. I have a a brief pitch. We'll, we could save that to the end. I'll I'll tell you. No, we'll do of... a different video on it. We'll do a different video. Okay. On it. Okay. Fantastic. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> the thing is, okay, I I do love this movie as well. I I almost everything about it. I was just a hundred percent in for. It's crazy to believe, but like. Everything, like the proposal where where uh, Sylvester Stallone comes in and he's like, how did you uh, propose to Adrian? He's like, well, okay, it was like, it was snowing, we were at the zoo, there was this tiger. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's just crazy because at some point there, for the fans of this franchise, the people who grew up with it, because obviously this franchise is older than I am, but him and, and him just saying this, you know, Sylvester Stallone kind of going down that memory lane, you're like, man, like I, it feels like... You know, you're like a close friend, and like you've heard this right. story again, like before, and like it, it just it's familiar, it's warm, and you're like, wow, like how long have we been on this journey with these characters? And as you said, like you know, you can t- bring about Star Wars, and Star Wars is about galactic empire war through across space, all this stuff, you know, all of it. But Rocky is such a personal story that's kind of repetitive and formula driven the entire way, but like. There's a lot that happens there, and there's a lot of character building and relationship building throughout these fran- this franchise. Um, but I wanted to say, I mean, literally before we go, I don't, I don't know how long we're going to be here because I, there's still so much to talk about. But the beginning, the beginning is so with, bad. With, with Andre Ward, you mean? Because yeah. you you yeah. were worried about this. I, I was, I was, I was, and I'm sorry. Like, I don't know how you feel about it, but the beginning is so bad that I was worried. Like, I cannot believe this movie starts so wonky. Like, oh man, this is gonna, this is not gonna. And then immediately propels itself to be like, wow, I can't believe how amazing this film is. What didn't you like about the beginning? Because I liked the beginning. But I'm, okay. maybe, yeah, maybe you caught something I didn't catch. Okay, so the problem is, is the beginning feels, and, and we talked about this briefly in the podcast, where I thought they're trying to cover too much ground. They're trying. They're trying to get to the third movie before oh. they're done making the second film. So, the movie starts, and yes, you have like "Give me my keys" and all of this other stuff. But go back and watch that. It feels small. It feels rushed. I, I, and it I feels, thought, I would just say the keys thing was cheap. I didn't like that line. The, the the keys thing is cheap. That's why. That's one of the things that makes it feel rushed. Is is you're taking the very little thing that you got from the first part of the movie in order to set up what could have been a really epic uh, second film. And then you just kind of steamroll through it. Like you have that connection between them, that bet that you're like, okay, well, I guess that makes sense based on what we saw in the last movie. And then you have just for whatever reason with the two fights that take place at the end of the movie, this one, it's a title match and it just feels so small. I mean, it feels smaller than the freaking first Rocky movie when they were using cardboard cutouts and the freaking stands to make it look bigger. It, it's it's crazy, and it starts with Donnie like he's he's shadow boxing, and then Rocky just comes in in the strangest way possible. He gives him this speech that feels like it's kind of meant for an end of a movie speech, but it's just kind right. of watered down and not really good, and there's no real connection to it. It's like there 
I, I don't understand it. I didn't like it. And it just went way too quickly. It was them trying their best to just skirt over making a second movie that established all this stuff so they can get to the Dragos. And that was my biggest fear. And I'm really glad the movie was good because that really put a bad taste in my mouth at the very, be- at the very beginning. I mean, I, I thought the only issue I had with it was the keys. And when he's like, when, when they said that, you know, Wheeler, Danny Wheeler was older. Um, I mean, I get it. They're saying that, you know, Adonis beat, uh, you know, this guy. He couldn't have beat him three years ago because Ad- Adonis, one of the good things about that film was this show that Adonis was a better fighter than he was in the first film, but, or that scene. But I also feel like. Donnie beating an aging champion is like not as impressive as him beating the champ in his prime. And it's sort of like the idea where, you know, with Rocky 2, Creed, Apollo was way, way better than Rocky. And Rocky won because of sure, sheer will, that eye of the tiger, as they explain in Rocky 3. Whereas in, in Rocky or in Creed, you know, it was like, okay, well, at any other time, it's almost the way I felt. Any other time, Donnie would have lost. But he won because. Andre Ward or whether Dane Wheeler was older it was like whatever um, it was they could have it might have been better if they did it as a montage you know what I mean I would, you might, it might have pissed you off even more though to be honest with you now that I think about it I, I think, like I said like this this franchise itself as Creed and I, I think that's one of the ways that we have to look at it and I think this is what you were saying earlier with not wanting a Creed 3 because of Rocky we need to look at this as Creed and not Rocky, which which I'm sure is like hard for people because of obviously Sylvester Stallone has been in both these movies. He's been a major part of them. And now whether he leaves or, or stays, it's like it's always going to have be Rocky, be its own formula. But, you know, they could have done that. I, I think you're right. They could have just had a, a Rocky three type of introduction with we get to see those six fights they talked about really briefly. That's my point. Like, yeah, show, yeah, sh- showing. Right? Sh- Showing him as like and also his growing fame because it's strange. I know boxing's not the same, and maybe that's part of the point of these movies now. Is like, is Rocky's not like boxing itself isn't the same as it was in the seventies and eighties. So these people aren't fabulously wealthy, <laughs> but like, uh, but you know, Rocky was champ. Well, the getting, champions are. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. of course. But like, Rocky's like Rocky had like freaking pinball machines in Rocky three, you know, he was, right. he was a big, um, but the thing is uh, having, having the aging champ line was just a way for them to get out of that storyline as quickly as possible. Like You're I said, right. they, they just You're skirted, right. they You're skirted right. over the second film as quickly as possible. And it's, that will always be the worst part of this movie in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I can't really argue that because the movie does get astronomically better as it progresses. Like, that's one thing I will say about the movies. It does get better and better and better and better and better. And it is one that you have to watch without spoilers because there's just so much good stuff, so many good twists. It wasn't like twist after twist after twist to where it's, you know, annoying or irritating. It's, it, it's, there were only a few, but they were all effective. And they were also, in a way, a little predictable, but not in a bad way. Uh, except for, of course, the... I mean, we knew that Donnie was going to not beat Victor Drago in the middle of the movie. We knew that. They're not going to pull... <laughs> they're not going to kill Snoke off in the middle. Uh-oh, another <laughs> lash. Another lash. No, but... Uh, it's a joke at this point. But uh, but still, like, you know what I mean? Like, we knew that something was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to be a DQ. I mean, without Victor was going to win. But still, like, you know... Um, it just it does get better and better as it as it you know as the film progresses, um, but predictable. But again, that I don't think predictability in a film is that bad because we knew that Creed was going to lose. I didn't even think it was going to be the towel being thrown in at all. Like when that happened, I was like, "Oh my god, that's brilliant!" He threw the freaking towel in like Apollo. Uh huh. Yeah. No. I. I. That was. I didn't expect that at all. I was expecting. I love. I love how his wife sang him to the ring. That was great. Oh my that god, was great! Look that that outside of the the baby might be death. Like that that was a powerful scene. That that to me was the best scene in the movie because it was like it, it made me tear up. I was like, oh my goodness! Like especially just having, uh, you know that caliber the the, the caliber of acting in this movie. Just Tessa in that Thompson scene. is yeah. great. Uh, Tessa both Thompson both is both great. of the, both of them. But the, the that the her her singing him to the ring. It's like wow, like. 
that was one of those moments where it's like, why didn't we do this in the first movie? <laughs> like, you know, and like, I love how, well, they say it for this one. I love how uh, it's like Rocky II when Adrian's like, win. I was like, you better damn sure you beat him. Like, it was the same thing. Like, you know, it was the same, uh, the woman kind of being the inspiration for him. And, and I like that. I always liked, one of the things I hate about Rocky IV, and I mean I hate this, is the you can't win line. We talked about it in the podcast. If you look at the formula of Rocky One, Two, and Three, it's always Adrian that's the trigger. Adrian tells him to win. Adrian gives him a speech by the beach, you know, in Rocky Three. It's always the woman that gives him that push, and I love that about those films because the movies are about their relationship. Rocky One, Two, and Three are about Rocky and Adrian, especially the first two. And in fact, the cover of the poster is them holding hands. I mean, it's 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 about them, and I like how Creed remembered that, you know, and it wasn't a clown show. Yeah, and and that's that to me is that relationship between them. I think you know you're saying earlier is the reason why we need a third one. I don't think you need Rocky. They've established, I, you know, I, I could get flack for this, but I would say it might be a better and more equal relationship than Adrian Rocky. Because even though Adrian, like she didn't really ever, she was a, she was the trigger, but she was never really someone who did anything. She was a strong character. She stood up for herself. She even got in everyone's face, especially when, she realized they were giving her just a bunch of bullshit, but she kept she kept people in line. Uh, Bianca's character is so much more. Like she she has hopes and dreams and stuff, and she's actually pursuing them throughout the first two movies in this franchise. I want to see them explore that a little bit more, and maybe what happens to their relationship as they start to butt heads, and especially with her ticking clock situation. And with the kid, like it's just there's a lot there that you can explore. That's, that's not going to be that's just true. a simple boxing movie. Yeah, we've got to discuss that in a separate video because I have a lot to to say and think about that, actually. A lot of things I have to say and think about it. So, anything else you want to say about this spoiler review? I mean, I was so happy with the film. Every character, everything just... Man, it was it just went so well. It was I was expecting a train wreck, and it was... And it wasn't just because the X-Pace were bad. It was actually a great movie. I, I, it's only, to me... To me... It's only slightly less good than Creed 1. Like, my order right now is Rocky for top four. Rocky 3, Rocky 1, Creed, Creed 2. That's my order right now. I think Creed 2 is a little bit better than Rocky 2. And I know that's going to be hard for some people to swallow, but that's my opinion. Um, Rocky 4 still at the very bottom. This movie did not make... This movie did not make Rocky 4 better, even though... Some people think so. I don't think it did. But it, as a movie, it was just... Very enthralling. This movie made the franchise better. It didn't make yes. Rocky Four better. Like yeah. it overall, it's a more enjoyable experience because you fleshed out characters. The, the this might be like the smallest little nitpick, but I just wanted to throw it out there since we're talking about spoiler reviews. Yeah, I, I don't like the way that they used Adrian's uh, restaurant. His his restaurant. I, it wasn't even the same space. Like I'm I'm. It looked almost, weird and looked different. I, I'm almost 100% positive it wasn't the same place, which which is really a sh like maddening for me because I'm pretty sure – I'd have to go back and watch it, but uh, between Rocky Balboa and Creed, it's actually the same space, or at least it looks really similar from what we saw yeah. in Creed. But we only saw it for one scene, right? It was yeah, but, like, but it, it explored it. I mean I do love that line. I, I, I have to go back and watch, but I absolutely love that line though. Uh, it's probably one of the best in the movie where – where Rocky goes into the restaurant and uh, Ivan's waiting for him. And he goes, all these pictures, none of me. And he goes, no, no we don't like to remember. It's like, we don't remember that. Like, it, that's not something that you memorize, like you remember. It's like, oh, man, that's like, that was great setup. You know, talking about what Rocky and why he didn't want to sit in uh, uh, Adonis's ring uh, or his side of the ring during that. It was first a fight. deep cut. It was a yeah. deep cut. Yeah, yeah. It was a deep cut, and I, I almost felt like Drago was offended. Like, dude, that was one of your greatest opponents ever, and that's how you feel. What about the? Let's talk about another real quick scene before we go. Creed and his daughter and the training. Oh, daddy's being a bitch. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Oh my god, I loved it so much. I I love that scene, especially since they look okay. This we movie, didn't really see that with Rocky, and I like how I did it here. No, yeah. Um, we didn't see a whole lot of, you know, relationship building Baby between stuff. Rocky. Yeah, so, like, I, I think um, this movie did a really good job at making Apollo a, an, a character again without bringing him back. That 
the mural on the gym. I mean, that's amazing because he's sitting there and he's screaming and he doesn't know what to do with himself and his daughter's right there and he apologizes. But Apollo in that scene is literally looking down at him, uh, you know, kind of in the same judging motion. It's like, oh man, like they, they, they knew what they were doing when they walked, then they actually wrote the script, you know, positioned the shots and all this other stuff. It just works on so many levels. And it's crazy because... You don't have to bring back Carl Weathers. You just had to give like this mural of him to symbolize like what it is that he's trying to accomplish and what he's fighting for until he realizes he can't fight for his father. He can't fight for revenge or anything else. He's fighting for himself and he needs to prove it to himself. I mean, it's just there's like you said, it just gets so much and better for his daughter and for his yeah. daughter and for his daughter is like it, it, the movie starts on the lowest note possible. And if you walk in and you like that that scene, it's only going to get better. Like, I, it very rarely do you watch a movie where the first scene is the worst, and you're like, "Oh, I don't think that they can come back from this." And it's like, "Oh man, I I am shocked. I am genuinely shocked." Yeah, I, it was great. It was a great movie. Anyways, that is it. I will leave a link to Real to Real's channel down below. Well, one of them, anyways, or both of them, whatever. We'll leave a link to the channels, and uh, we'll come back and discuss the future of the Creed franchise in a separate video. But I loved it. What more can be said? So, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk to y'all soon.